All right, so yesterday we were talking about segments. Uh, today the focus is going to be on angles. So this is section 1.3, measuring angles. A little vocabulary in the beginning. An angle is a figure made up of two rays. So two rays or sides that have a common endpoint, and that common endpoint is called the vertex. So here's a ray yx, a ray yz. The common vertex or the common endpoint is y. And we're going to find out later we can actually name it using the vertex. Um, the sides here, the rays are actually called the sides. And then the figure over to the right shows that the interior is what's inside here between, between the two rays. And then the exterior is everything else out here on the outside. Uh, we normally always worry about the interior of the angle. We don't focus a lot on the exterior. Uh, the big part from this section, though, you need to get is there are four ways to name the angle. So number one, you can just use the vertex. You just use the letter that, that's actually right here. That's the end point for the two rays. Um, the second way is you can use three letters, and you use the vertex and a point on each side. Now the order is important. If you look at the figure up above, um, I could use angle X, Y, Z, or I could also write it as angle Z, Y, X. And the key feature there being is that the vertex or the hinge spot has to be in the center. The other two doesn't really matter the order, but the vertex or that hinge has to be the center letter. And then the easiest way is sometimes in diagrams, they just go ahead and they put a number in here, like the picture up above, they put this 2 in. I can just call it angle 2. Now there's one little difference with symbols. The angle symbol comes straight down and then goes horizontal, as opposed to this is a symbol for an angle. Um, if you come down and then also go down, that is the less than symbol. So there's just this brief little small difference between the two. Sometimes when I start writing fast, it kind of looks like the less than symbol, but usually by the context, you'll know that it's an angle symbol. All right, so moving on down, looking at a few examples here. They want us to name an angle using three different ways. So kind of what we did up above, I can name this angle, either I could call it angle one using the number notation, that's my favorite. Um, my next favorite would be calling it angle Q, which Q is the vertex, so that's why I can get away with one letter. Or I can use three letters, and my two choices would either be angle PQR, or I could call it angle RQP. Those are my two options. But again, the important part is Q is in the center. Now over here to the right, there are actually more than one angle. There's actually three angles. You have the top angle, which I'll call angle one. You have the bottom angle, which I'll call angle two. And then you have the entire big angle, which we could call angle three. So I could use numbers there. And it says name all the angles. So I could write down one, two, and three. Um, I cannot use angle B on this example. I can't use just the vertex. And I'm not allowed to use that one on this one because if I just say angle B, I'm not sure if we're talking about the top angle, the bottom angle, or the whole angle. So this is a scenario where they have to use numbers, or I could use um, the three-letter combination. So angle 1, I could also write that as angle CBD. I could also reverse the letters. I'm not going to write it down, but I could do DBC. For angle 2, I could call that angle ABD. So angle 2 down here at the bottom, A to B to D. So that's angle 2. And if I wanted to name angle 3, um, I just started either one into the other. This time I'll start at the top. C to B to A. Angle C, B, A. And of course I could reverse it and call it ABC. So this is a situation over here where I have to use three letters because there's more than one angle there and it gets confusing. All right, now we're going to go down and look at actually the measure of angles and do a little bit of classifying here. So when we want to measure an angle, the, de the units that we use are given in degrees. Uh, one thing to remember, hopefully prior knowledge, is that in a circle, 
there are 360 degrees if you go all the way around. Uh, we'll learn later, but in a straight line, just from here halfway around the circle, a straight line is actually 180. Um, so those are just kind of, kind of some reference numbers that we need to know. Uh, from middle school, you probably have learned about acute angles. Acute angles are all angles that are less than 90 degrees. And you visually can look at them, and uh, they're pinched down kind of tight. I always kind of think about the right angle. You know, the right angle here is exactly, it equals 90 degrees. And if they don't want to tell you it's a right angle or write the number in, they'll do this little red box. I'm going to kind of make it bigger in blue. But you'll see a little corner like that, and that'll tell you that it's 90 degrees. And if you notice over here, the acute angle is, is pinched tighter than 90 degrees. Where on this next one, an obtuse angle, this is an angle that's between 90 and 180. So greater than 90, less than 180. Um, so I would guesstimate this one somewhere around maybe 150 or 160. I don't know, I'm just guessing this isn't accurate, but about. And then a straight angle is a straight line, which is always equal for sure to 180 degrees. So those are the four ways that we can classify angles. Congruent angles. Uh, yesterday we learned a symbol for congruent. It was an equal with the little squiggly or the little tilde above it. Congruent segments meant they had the same length. Well, congruent angles have the same measure or the same degrees. You measure them with a protractor, they come out to be the exact same. So I could write a statement. This is called a congruence statement where I'm stating that one angle is congruent to another angle right here. Um, but I also could use use little, kind of like tick marks, but arc marks. So I'm going to put these in red and I'm going to put them a little bit bigger. But if I show a little arc on two different angles, that signifies that those two angles are congruent to each other. So I like to use those arc marks instead of writing out the full congruent statement most of the time. All right, let's move on to page two scrolling down have a picture of a protractor here we're going to get a little bit more practice in class on the homework using protractors um, but we need to find the angle measure part one and then classify uh, saying whether it's acute obtuse right or straight so we want to find the measure of angle AOC well first I'm going to find it so AOC starts at A goes to O and blasts through C so there's my angle right in here and I can kind of tell that it's, it, to me, it looks like it's smaller than 90. So I look over here on the protractor, and I have two numbers to choose from. I have a 30, and I have a 150. Well, just by looking at it, I know that it's less than 90. So this one is 30 degrees, which would be classified as an acute angle. Now also, since I started from this side, and I went up this way, I always start at 0, so I went 0, 10, 20, 30. So even if you aren't positive, you can kind of count from 0 from one side of the angle and, and work that way. I'm going to erase this for each example so it's not cluttered up. Uh, angle COD. COD comes right here from C to O to D. So this one, neither side or neither ray starts at 0, so I'm going to have to use a little subtraction. You know, the angle goes in this space. To me, it looks pretty close to 90 degrees. Um, kind of hard to eyeball it. So I'm going to actually use the numbers. I start at 30, and then I end up right here, which is halfway between 110 and 120. So I'm going to call that 115. And to find out how many degrees it is, I'm going to do the subtraction or the difference of those two. 115 take away 30 comes out to be... 85 degrees so I guess my eye was a little bit off it wasn't a right angle it's a little bit less than a right angle so it is also acute and let's do the last one angle EOD I'll get rid of this stuff and come back in angle EOD so start at E go to O go through D so this is a very small angle Man, this angle looks like it's going to be acute as well, using kind of what I did before. Um, and I could use the bottom numbers if I wanted to. I'll do that on this one. I'm going from 40 to 65. 
And when I subtract those two numbers, it looks like 25 degrees. So this example, they all happen to be acute. They all were less than, uh, less than 90 degrees. Um, I'm going to add another one on there just because I don't like how they all were acute. So I'm going to throw an obtuse one on there. Um, if I wanted to make pick an obtuse angle off the chart, uh, maybe something like angle AOE. AOE is definitely bigger than 90 degrees. And if I measure it, it starts at zero and goes all the way around. It looks like to 140. So 140 minus zero is 140 degrees. All right, so next I want to take a look at the angle addition postulate, which is a lot like segment addition. If you remember, segment addition basically said if we have a segment, um, let's just call it, you know, A, put B in here, and C in there, we could say that the left piece, AB, <clears throat> plus the right piece, BC, had to equal the entire distance all the way from A to C. That was basically the segment addition postulate. Angle addition works the same way. If you have two angles that are right smack dab next to each other and share a common side, you can add them together to get the full angle. So in the picture here, um, basically the blue angle right here, this SQR, when you add that to the red angle, it should give us the entire angle. So we should be able to get all the way from R angle RQP should equal those two angles added together. Uh, so let's do a quick example with just numbers. Um, angle XWZ is 121 degrees. So angle XWZ. Now when I'm talking about angle XWZ and I'm talking about the whole angle, I like to put the whole angle measure on the outside. It just works better for me. It doesn't get in the way. And because if I put it down here, I don't know which one or, or if it's the whole thing or if it's one of the separate ones. So I put it on the outside. Um, X, W, Y. So X to W to Y. This little side right here is 59 degrees. And we need to find Y, W, Z. So find Y, W, Z. So this is the one that, that we're after. That's the question mark. And I can kind of use subtraction. Basically, you know, 59 plus what is going to equal 121. Well, to find the what, I just subtract 20, uh, 121 minus 59. And that should come out to be 62 degrees. So I believe this right here is 62 degrees. And I should be able to add them back together and see if it checks out. And I believe it does. Um, another, another vocab term that's pretty important here is an angle bisector. An angle bisector is basically a ray that divides an angle into two congruent pieces. It means it's right smack dab in the middle. So if I look to the diagram over here to the right, ray JK, this red ray here, ray JK, if that bisects angle LJM, basically what it means is, it creates this this side up here is the exact same measure as this one. It, it's like you folded a piece of paper right down the middle, and, it, and it's perfectly two congruent angles from each other. And I can use my my arc marks to show that this angle equals that angle, or I could write it out in a congruent statement. But I'd rather just use the marks because it's shorter. So let's do a couple examples involving angle bisectors. One we have to draw ourselves. And the other one, I'm going to move this up a little bit so I have more room. The first one's drawn for us. The second one we have to draw on our own. So kind of showing you different difficulty levels of problems. So if BD bisects ABC, from this information right here, I'm going to come in and mark my diagram. All right, I know that this piece equals that piece. They're equal to each other. And now I need to label it. ABD is 6x plus 3. So this angle right in here, I don't really have enough room, so I'm going to use an arrow. That's 6x plus 3 degrees. And the right side, angle DBC, this side, is 8x minus 7. Well, since this is an angle bisector, 
because of this word bisect, I can set these two angles equal to each other. I know they have to be the same measure. And now it's pretty much just an algebra problem. I'm going to subtract the 6x from both sides, which gives me 3 equals 2x minus 7. And I, since I have all the x's on the right, I'm going to get my numbers on the left, so I'm going to do the opposite and add 7 to both sides. 2x equals 10, and divide by 2, divide by 2, and x equals 5. And if I plug it in, it should work out. So let's actually, if I look at the, the question, find the measure of ABD, that's, that's the final answer. So I haven't answered the question yet. I've only found out what X is. Um, so first of all, where is ABD? ABD is this angle right here, A to B to D. So they want this angle on the left. So let's go ahead and let's plug 5 in. This was the expression for that angle. So 6 times x, which we now know is 5 from down here, add 3 to it, comes out to be 33 degrees. So I think that side's 33 degrees. They don't really ask me, but this side must be 33 degrees. And the entire angle, if they needed it, would be 66 degrees. Now, a little bit on notation right now. This M, I haven't really talked about that M. That M stands for the measure of, all right? So the measure of. So this is really saying find the measure of that angle. But that, that's what this little M right here means, the measure of. It's just kind of a shorthand notation. All right, last one. Let's come over here to the side and let's, let's draw this guy. Ray QS bisects PQR. So this is the big angle, PQR. I'm going to draw it sideways this time instead of up and down. It doesn't really matter how you turn it. But PQR, uh, the only thing that has to happen is Q has to be in the middle because the middle letter is always the vertex. P and R doesn't really matter. I'll put P on top, R on the bottom. And ray QS bisects it. So I need a ray right in the middle. QS. And that's going to be my bisector. And I'm going to show you that it bisects by putting my little arcs there. And now we need to label the picture. PQS, so the top angle is 5Y minus 1. That's what this information told me. And then PQR, this one's a little bit tricky. PQR, if I look at it, PQR is the whole angle. It goes from P to Q down to R. So the whole thing here is 8Y plus 12. Now, a common mistake would be right now set up an equation, you know, 5y minus 1 equals 8y plus, plus uh, I don't know why I wrote 2, plus 12. But that wouldn't be true because what you'd really be saying is you'd be saying that this top angle, 5y minus 1, equals the whole thing. And that would be wrong. So I'm going to have to make a little move here. Since the top angle is 5y minus 1 and they're congruent, I know the bottom angle has to be the exact same. So now that I know the two angles are both 5y minus 1, I'm going to use the, the angle addition postulate. So I'm going to go the top angle plus the bottom angle should equal the big angle, the entire thing. So basically I had, I had top plus the bottom equals the whole thing. And that's my setup. And now the rest is, is using some algebra. So I'm going to kind of go through here, clean up the left side. I'm going to combine like terms. 5y and 5y is 10y. A negative 1 and a negative 1 make a minus 2. The right side I'm just going to bring down. Um, now I'm going to get all my y's to the left. So I'm going to subtract 8y from both sides. And I get 2y take away 2 equals 12. Now to get y by itself, I'm going to add the 2 to both sides, doing the opposite. That cancels. I get 2y equals 10. Wow, we've had a lot of 5 as answers for our examples. And y comes out to be equal to 5. Now again, we got to go back to the original question and did we answer it. We need to find the measure of PQS. Well, PQS, P to Q to S, is just this top part. So we need to find out how many degrees that is. So I'm going to plug y in to 5y minus 1. So 5 
y minus 1. Well, y we now know is 5. So it looks like that comes out to be 24 degrees. So to answer the final question, the measure of angle PQS is 24 degrees. All right, I believe that wraps up 1.3 notes. See you tomorrow.